is a, a pleasure for me to be to be back in in Mumbai. I had the opportunity to uh, have similar discussions in the past, and the privilege to see that there's some action also in in Mumbai regarding this discussion. And I just want for to to see this action come to a reality. And the reason the, the presentation I bring today is to see the reality of several places in the world that had adopted uh, bus rapid transit as part of their transport policies and had succeeded in making it happen uh, because of adding three very, very important elements. One is the recognition of the need. The second is the political will to solve that need. And the third is good planning and good implementation processes to make it happen. Uh, all of these in a context of what we call sustainable urban transport, which is solving the needs of the present without compromising the needs of the future. When you do a flyover, you probably are not doing that. You are solving a present need, but you are compromising the future. So sustainable transportation is about that, not compromising the future. And we have come to a consensus in the profession in, in that it requires at least four elements, focusing on moving people, as was uh, widely presented in the, in, the, in, in the introduction. And that requires thinking first of the people that is walking and the people that is biking. Then thinking about public transportation and improving public transportation overall. Not just one link here, a nice metro in this section of the city while the rest of the city is still with difficulties. And then developing the land, the activities, in a way that is consistent with sustainability that requires that the people don't need to travel that much having right uh, densities and mix of uses around our transit systems. And last but not least, these incentives to unneeded use of car. Not that the people don't have cars. It's not using the car for every single trip. It's not, it's not a problem owning the car. The problem is trying to, to use the car for everybody to go at the same place at the same time. And that's what needs to be disincentivized. Bus rapid transit fits very well in this picture. And there are two broad definitions for bus rapid transit. One that is from the supply side is what, it, what is in the bus rapid transit system. It, it is the road, it is the bus, it is the management system, it is the technologies that are behind it. There's a very good definition that has been adopted in the United States by the academicians of the, of the Transit Cooperative Research Program that had a really well-defined thing that talks about a flexible rubber tire form of rapid transit that combines the stations, the vehicles, the service, the running ways, and the ITS elements into an integrated system with a strong identity. Each of these words have been chosen very carefully. It's not, it's, it, and, and has been the result of extensive deliberations because each of these words has a meaning and we will see what it represents in the examples that I will bring afterwards. And there is another definition that I like better, actually, that is the definition from the people's perspective. The, it is a high quality public transport system oriented to the user that offers fast, comfortable, and low-cost urban mobility. And here is something that is key. It's low cost. We don't have the budget to solve all our transport needs. So we need to choose our solutions in a way that we are able to afford them. And Bus Rapid Transit has proven affordable in at least 68 cities around the world. So it's not about the system that has happened in few places. It's something that has happened in many places. 11 cities in US and Canada, 15 cities in Latin America, 20 cities in Europe, 2 cities in Africa, 16 cities in Asia, including 3 Indian cities, and 4 cities in Australia and New Zealand. 
So it's not, it's not something rare. It's something that has been implemented in a right way by many planners and cities around the world, including the Indian city of Ahmed Ambedkar that will be presented, that put all the systems in place. The road, segregated median busways, the stations, where you pay to get to the station and access the bus at the same level, large buses with wide doors, a centralized control. It's not about putting a, an infrastructure and letting anybody to come in. It's a managed system. And that has also a very special image. That is not the same old bus. It's a, a new way of providing bus service. The first place where bus rapid transit was implemented was in Brazil. So it is something that is very interesting because it's the only technology in the world that has been developed in a developing country for developing needs. The city of Curitiba started it and then several cities in Brazil and then went to other places in Latin America like my city Bogota, Colombia and then Mexico and it's, there are many projects right now there are 15 cities but there are other 15 cities following suit so it's something that is happening and it's happening very fast now Curitiba started with a very simple concept very simple concept if we want to give, give priority to the people we, give, we need to give them the best part of the road. So let's put the median pathways and develop the city around this bus system. They introduced stations, real stations, not a simple bus stop where the most important thing is the billboard, not the space for the people. It's a real bus, bus station where you can you pay to access the station and you access the bus at the same level and integration terminals and let do the land planning around the system and they have done a marvelous city in southern Brazil the city of Curitiba is the world example and it's still the place of pilgrimage to us transport planners and, and, and really is, 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 is doing very well for many years Curitiba was a very rare case and many people used to say, oh, it can happen only in Curitiba because they, it's, it's, they are very special, they are different people, not like us. Uh, but it started happening in other places. It uh, went to Ecuador, with other cities in Brazil as well. But in, in Ecuador, they put together this beautiful system that uses trolley buses as, as opposed to diesel buses and moves a lot of people every day using exactly the same principles median busways, stations, access, a level access to the, to the vehicles and work really nicely. Then came Bogota. Bogota had a really, really big need, so put together a really big system, le very large stations, double, uh, uh, they, took to, they, took, they provide priority in a very strong way. We did, I have to say, I was part of this system. I like to say them, but I, I was part of, I, I'm a proud part of this system. I worked with Enrique Peñalosa for, for three years and then with the following mayors in putting together this system and, and growing it up along with a, a, a really good group of professionals. But it was taking the concepts of Curitiba and other Brazilian cities and, and then Quito to Bogota for the needs of Bogota. And it was done according to the needs of Bogota, very high capacity system. You need to move in these buses 45,000 passengers per hour per direction. That's very big capacity. Previously only it was possible to handle it with, with, with trains. Uh, the designers of these systems proved that it was possible with buses. And they did it taking a good portion of the street where it was available but also in downtown Bogota where there's no much space there was a bold decision if there's not enough space who gives up 